Hello, everyone. Hopefully, you can hear me well. My name is Jason Pinto. I'm the co-founder and COO of Pace Revenue. I want to first of all thank Focusrite for this great opportunity to present today and share with you all some of the really exciting things we've been building at Pace. And more importantly, tell you a bit about what our customers are saying about the things we're doing for them. And really, it's all about what we're doing with our hospitality commercial platform, because everything else is just plain old revenue management. So to kick things off, I obviously don't need to tell this audience about the massive transformation that hospitality has been going through. It's basically a battle royale for relevance because we have the traditional battle between the OTAs and the brands. Uh, and that's really a battle that's been going on for years now. But what's been added to that are these new OTAs, Airbnb, and a bunch of new brands that have entered the fray to sort of compete for the consumer mind share. And really what's been happening is that the traditional hospitality brands have been using and adopting tech as essentially the only sort of defense they have uh, against these new brands and the traditional OTAs. And this has driven a kind of a broader market adoption of tech and a kind of a resurgence of the need for hospitality brands to update their aging tech stack. And the prize here for those that win is vast. I mean, this is potentially a $16 billion market of what it'll grow to, which is essentially 2% of turnover of the entire market. Uh, again, that's a tiny fraction of the 15% that people are paying OTAs, which you can see on the right. Uh, but it really is a sort of a massive prize. And you can see that there have been traditional players that have entered the market like Oracle and so forth to essentially build hospitality platforms uh, you know, of yesteryear. And on the right, you can see that there's a huge number of new entrants like us who are really trying to take the crown from these players and basically change the way that uh, hospitality is sold and hospitality tech is, is adopted in this, in this industry. So um, a bit about what we're doing, which is really our plan to become the number one commercial platform for the hospitality industry. So we help our customers sell to the right consumer, the right guest at the right time for the right price. And in doing so, we massively increase our customers' revenue and drive down their operating costs. So really drive massive profit increases in these sort of low profit businesses. Really our ambition is to become the epicenter of the hospitality data universe and ultimately the epicenter of decision-making in the hospitality universe where we'll pull data from lots of different resources and ultimately become this place that all the commercial decisions are made. So you can throw out guesswork and opinions and just focus on results. And that's been sorely missing in the past. And um, I've, of course, given you the sort of brainy part of what we do, but we built the thing to be beautiful as well because we want to have a beautiful and super easy to use product for our customers. And we think we've achieved that goal uh, by building what is a kind of a beautiful modern platform for our customers that covers a whole range of features and needs that they have uh, with a number of industry firsts, so hourly updates and this incredible data as a service platform behind all of the beauty. And that's allowed us to serve a kind of a huge array of different customer types and lots of different verticals from boutique hotels to limited service and so on um, all across this, this single platform. But, um, you know, really, you shouldn't take my word for it. Just listen to what our customers say. And they're really driven by this huge increase in revenue and profit, and ultimately what is a sort of a huge double digit ROI. So we have groups like Dalmata on the left that are limited service, all the way out to Fuss Camp, which is a huge camping business in, in the Nordics. Um, but one I'll point out, for example, is ANO. So ANO is owned by TPG Capital. So it's actually the biggest hospitality hybrid brand in Europe and one of the biggest in the world. And we drove this massive double digit increase in RGI all during the COVID crisis, actually. So they've seen incredible results during this crisis. And as you can imagine, we're powering this huge increase in spend um, and ultimately profit in RGI as the world comes out of COVID. So what you, what you should take away from this is that we have already an incredible group of loyal customers across a bunch of different verticals. And importantly, we're driving real value to these customers. And how are we doing that? Well, why are we winning these customers against a number of well-funded incumbents? Well, really, it comes down to the fact that we built a modern platform for today. 
So we built this modern decision science engine that's not hobbled by all ways of thinking and all technology and science uh, for what is a modern age. And we've wrapped that with a great platform and a great business model, which is a really no risks software as a service business model. 10 more no seconds, 10 more seconds, so Jason. On. So that's really how we win. And I guess really where I want to end is our most important asset, which is our people. We have people from hedge funds, academia, et cetera, who have all joined. We've been lucky enough to have these people join our platform to adopt this mission. And the mission we have is to transform hospitality decision-making so that there's no more opinions, no more guesswork, just results, because everything else is just a plain old RMS. Thanks Great. again for your attention. Thank you very much, Jason. Well done. Let's bring up the dragons here. So Lola, you have a little bit of experience with, with technology, trying to connect sellers of products with, with buyers of them with local purse. So maybe you've got a question here for, uh, for our friend, Jason. And Lola, I think you're on mute. Of course, that always yeah. happens, right? No, sorry about that. Uh, Jason, just great job. Um, I really liked the tagline about selling to the right guests at the right time and through the right channels. And the question I have for you is, you showed us that $16 billion kind of pot that a couple of smaller players are trying to get into. What makes you really stand out? Because you did mention some competition and sure. you do have a very impressive ROI slide. Um, but what's making you different from the others trying to get that same pie? Absolutely. So it's really about the fact that we have built a modern platform uh, with sort of modern decision science. Uh, as you can imagine, our incumbents built their platforms, some in the 80s, believe it or not, and even some in the early aughts. And now they're trying to essentially kind of greenwash their platforms with some modern thinking. We all know that doesn't work. You really need to build a platform from the ground up with the sort of tools of machine learning and data science that are available today. And we've you know, brought people in from the get-go who can do that. So it's really our ability to start with a clean sheet of paper and build a decision platform that takes decisions for our customers rather than ultimately relying on an old tech stack where the decision is actually really on the, on the customer to turn these knobs. Thank you. I, I have a similar question. Uh, I mean, you, you seem to do a lot of different things at the same time, and you seem to target a lot of uh, different customers at the same time, and this in a, in a market that's pretty competitive. Why, why have you decided to take this very broad approach instead of just starting with one segment and then expanding from there? I guess I didn't tell you that we've been going since 2017. So when we started in 2017, we start with one narrow product, one narrow customer, and that was okay. it. We had an incredible laser focus on this until we drove incredible value for that customer. And that customer started telling other customers in a very narrow vertical, which actually was limited service. And as we built further and further, we, of course, are ambitious folks. So we want to take a bigger fraction of that TAM. So we built actually more valuable features for this narrow customer base and slowly but surely added a kind of a broader customer universe to that with more features on our product. And Jason, in terms of that, in, in terms of that product, because I can imagine that the dynamic pricing wave that that you ride with what you call a modern platform, how much of that is is based on that wave versus how you actually excel at creating these sort of yeah automatic revenue management systems? Because they're actually different markets, maybe. Uh, not not so much actually. I mean, you know, the sort of automated decision making and so forth uh, that we sort of VCs and entrepreneurs talk about, really what we talk about is customer value, yeah? So whether it's, you know, from this kind of uh, automated uh, pricing, dynamic pricing wave or something else, what our customers are interested in is, can you generate higher revenue for me? How do you do that? Well, we have this fancy data science and so forth, but can you generate higher revenue and profit and reduce my costs? Great. Thank you very much, Jason. Thank you well again done. for your time and questions, everyone. It's really great.